Hi, today this is Jordan, and she is with the Kansas Department of Health and Environment. She's their curriculum director for youth, and she is here to talk to you about tobacco use and vaping. I want you to put all your phones away, put all your headphones away, get your computers put away. I don't want them out. That's disrespectful. And give her your attention uh, and for a real good talk uh, that is probably pretty interesting for you guys. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so my name is Jordan. Um, I work at the City Health Department in Topeka. Um, and I run a youth tobacco prevention program called Resist. And so I usually don't get to it because everybody asks questions before this, but maybe we can get there. Um, so just so you guys know, I'm here to inform them. I'm not here to vilify the people who use vape, right? Because chances are that maybe somebody in this room uses vape, okay? So I'm not here to vilify you. I'm here to inform you. Everything that I'm sharing is scientifically based, right? Like I can pull up every statistic that you need. Um, but I want you to see this, this is a conversation. I want you to feel like you can ask me questions for sure. Like feel free to raise your hand. I just ask that you are respectful. Um, I do not tolerate people talking while I'm talking. So here's your warning. I'll call you out if you talk, okay? Um, so please, yeah, just be respectful and we're gonna dive in. So we've gotta start with the beginning, taking down tobacco. We gotta talk about tobacco before we can talk about vape, okay? If anything you don't walk away with, is that vape is a tobacco product, okay? And we'll dive into that in a second. So, I gotta clarify this. So, whenever I'm talking about vape tobacco or a tobacco product, I am talking about commercial tobacco. I am talking about tobacco that is mass produced and sold for profit. I am not talking about sacred tobacco, the tobacco that is used in Native American rituals, okay? Very, two very different things. Yes, they're both tobacco, but they're cultivated and farmed in very different ways. So, first thing I wanna call out here is that the tobacco companies are very, very good at marketing. They've like, they've like literally written the playbook on marketing, okay? So um, who do you think that this tobacco product is marketed towards? Native American population, right? It's pretty obvious. So it doesn't matter what minority population you're, you're a part of, if you're LGBTQ, if you're African American, if you're Hispanic, there is a tobacco product for you, right? There is a marketing system to you. Okay, because we know that if you're a minority, more likely you are to use tobacco, more like you are to be addicted to their products, okay? So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Um, so who is Big Tobacco? So let me clarify who I'm talking about when I'm talking about Big Tobacco. So Big, big Tobacco are these money-hungry giants, right? Altria, Reynolds American, and ITG. So these people own the, um, the brands like Marlboro, Copenhagen's, uh, Grizzly, Camel, um, Cool Cigarettes. All those, and they all have their multiple big products that they that cre they created. So these are who I'm talking about. They have so much money, they don't know what to do with it, um, and they don't care about the people who use their products, right? Because their product is lethal. The only product, tobacco is the only product that when used as intended, kills half of its users, okay? So let's say we all have an iPhone. We all have the same iPhone, but you know, only, Half of us are going to survive, but the, you guys are fine. Like it's fine. You'll you'll just die and it'll be fine. Like when did when has that ever been okay? When has that ever been acceptable? It's not. But why did they get to get away with it? And I think what well, the biggest thing is is that they have a lot of money. Okay, so that's just something to think about. So um, Big Tobacco actually wrote the playbook on not only marketing but targeting kids. They have tons and tons of internal documents about how youth are their target market because 90% of smokers start smoking before the age of 18, right? Um, so before they're even legally able to buy a tobacco product. So here are some ways that they have targeted uh, young people with their marketing. Ways that you've probably seen like every day and just don't realize that it's literally for you. Yeah. 
may cause you to hurt to act like a man. These are like a dollar for two of them. Super cheap. They're all flavored. Number one, tobacco use is the number one cause of preventable death and disease in the world. In the world. Number one. Number one reason why people die is because they use tobacco. How is that still a thing? I mean, we've known that, that uh, cigarettes cause cancer since like 1960, right? So why is this so challenging? Because these guys are so good at marketing. Um, so I think so. it's worth mentioning, I like to put this out at the beginning. So, so they did such a good job, right? So the tobacco industry did just such a good job at marketing that they were so obvious that they were addicting youth. And so in 1998, our federal court, they took, we took the three biggest tobacco companies, the one that I listed before, to court. And we said, look, you can't target to kids anymore. Like, we've seen your internal documents. We know that you need them. We know that you're targeting them. So you can't have cigarette flavor. You can't have flavored cigarettes. You can't um, market in kids' magazine advertisements. You can't support... Um, uh, actors or celebrities or um, do any kind of endorsements. This is all for cigarettes, okay? But if you just saw that, e-cigarettes, they can do that. They can have flavors. They can, they can advertise anywhere they want because there are no restrictions for e-cigs, okay? So just think about that. So they got put, they, a policy was put in place by our legislation to protect you guys. And they found a loophole around that. And it's working. It's really, really working. Okay, so um, and I'm talking about vape, obviously. So this is tobacco. It's important to start from the basics. Tobacco is actually a plant. It looks, it's green at first. Um, so it, tobacco is usually picked, dried, and rolled, um, cultivated into a white paper called a cigarette. And then there's another super common tobacco product. It's picked, dried, and rolled the same way, except it's rolled into a brown paper. What's that called? Cigar. Cigar. So what is that paper made out of? Does anyone know? A leaf. The leaf, tobacco leaf, yeah. So basically a cigar is a tobacco leaf, tobacco in it, and rolled. So nicotine is naturally found in this plant, in tobacco. It just naturally occurs there, okay? Nicotine is an extremely, extremely addictive substance. Okay, it's up there with heroin. Um, it, it, the reason why is because it alters your brain pathways. It, it, it affects that reward system of your brain, okay? And, and does anyone know, can anyone tell me uh, what age you, you are when your brain is considered mature? 25. 25. Yeah, I'm 25, and I'm considered an adult. I've been out of college for like four years now. So like, I'm supposed to be an adult, and my brain's not even completely like grow or mature. So if that that's just to put it into perspective. Like, you guys got a long way to go, right? Um, so it releases dopamine. It alters the brain pathways. It interrupts the synapses firing. Um, so it it can reach. It can really affect your memory. And, uh, and your ability to pay attention, right? So if you're literally like physically addicted to something, like I'm not just talking that you're like, oh, I need to go, you know, puff on my vape. No, like my body is craving, I'm sweating, I'm, in, I'm anxious, I can't stop thinking about it, I can't even sit still. That's the kind of things that happen when you withdraw from nicotine. And adults struggle with this for years, years and years. 80% of people who are some tobacco smokers wish they never started, and they want to figure out how to quit, but it's so hard to quit. Can you imagine being 16 years old with all the things that you guys have to do and having to deal with nicotine addiction and getting off of this? It's a lot. It's a lot for a young person. It's a lot for an adult. It would be a lot for a young person. Um, so nicotine from a cigarette can actually reach your brain in 10 seconds. 10 seconds. And that doesn't naturally happen, okay? They chemically engineered cigarettes to be as addictive as possible. So why do people get so addicted to cigarettes? It's yeah. the nicotine. nicotine, right? It's That's the immediate thing that you think of. Super addictive, but there's more to it, right? They've actually done everything they possibly can to make this product as addictive as possible. So they've done tons and tons of studies. And who did you think they studied on? They didn't study on people because that's illegal. 
rats. They studied on dogs oh. and monkeys and rats and everything. So they don't care. They have no value of life, let alone human life or, you know, animals either. So that's how they found out all this crap, is how to get, um, how to addict somebody as quickly as possible at the expense of other species. Um, so they're engineered for addiction. It goes as far as if they put sugar in there, because you know sugar is kind of addicting as well. But the way that they've actually um, made these products, so this is the filter, right? And so when you think of filter, you think that it cleanses something, right? So if you like pour, oh, if you have a water filter, it purifies the water, right? And so it's not exactly the purpose of this. The main, I think the main purpose of this is to keep the tobacco leaves from getting into the user's mouth. But another piece of the puzzle is that these, this um, filter is porous, so there's little pores, little holes in it. Um, and the way that you hold a cigarette is you hold that piece, so you're covering up some of those pores. And so therefore, when you inhale, you have to inhale harder, therefore getting that nicotine into your blood and up into that brain in under 10 seconds. Okay, so there's many other, other different ways that they've um, scientifically engineered these to do this, but that's just one of them, okay? So there's approximately 600 ingredients in a cigarette. I mean, like stuff like rat poison, uh, all of this other stuff. Um, when burned, more than 7,000 different chemicals, and 69 of those chemicals are known to cause cancer. Did everybody know that cigarettes cause cancer? Yeah. Yeah, it's really well known. Super, super known. Do you, so the national smoking rate has gone down like tremendously. So like we've been doing our job, right? Like this is a good thing. Um, so since 1998, it's been a steady decrease, 71% decrease. That's huge. 36% of people were using it in 98. Was that when you were born? Probably not even then. You guys are probably 2000. Um, definitely for sure, because you're freshman. Wow, I feel old. <laughs> um, so, the, so why do you guys think that the, the, what had to contribute to this? The ban you're talking about. Say again. The ban you're talking about. The ban. The ban. Yeah. So that happened in 1998, and that's when it started declining. Good job. What else? What else can you think of? Reasons why it stopped being so popular? Um, more studies were put out there. More studies were put out there. Do you, maybe more education, more awareness. That's a good assumption. What else? Any other any other theories as to why maybe? Go ahead. More people started to die by cigarettes. Yeah. More people are starting to die. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else that you can think of? Okay. Those are all. Those are all really good reasons. Um, uh, usually everybody, um, the first thing that they say is vape. They say vape could be the reason, but vape didn't join until 2008. So, but it's still decreasing. So I just want you guys to remember this. We've made progress. Like, people don't use cigarettes. And would you guys say that cigarettes are socially acceptable among your peers? No. No? Not necessarily? More like vape? Vape is totally socially acceptable. It's almost seen as your cool if you use vape, right? Like, I'm not, I know. Like, we don't have to act like I don't, like we all don't know that. So yeah, so just kind of keep that in the back of your, of your mind a little bit. So what is secondhand smoke? Go ahead. Is that like this, what you smell or what you get off someone else's cigarette? Right, so if I was smoking a cigarette in this room with all of you, you guys would all be exposed to secondhand smoke. Yes, that, that is true. The thing about secondhand smoke is it's involuntary. Isn't it more lethal than regular smoking? It's, that's questionable, but it is lethal. People, there are thousands of people who die who've never picked up a cigarette in their life because of that smoke. So yeah, so not only is it hurtful to the person using it, but it's hurtful to the people around you, right? Um, so what do you think third-hand smoke is? Go ahead. Uh, technically, I'm not in this class, but um, third-hand smoke is when uh, the smoke embeds itself into clothing, uh, fabrics, curtains, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, walls, and then someone else gets that yeah. as well. I had a suit jacket that had third hand smoke on it. Yeah, you can, I mean, if you're around a smoker, you'll, you know, your clothes will smell like it, right? So that, that is third hand smoke, right? And that has a lot to do with the property, like the tar properties in, in cigarettes. Like if you were in a, um, you know, every time you get into someone's car um, who smokes, you know, right? Because it, it reeks. Um, and if you were in a smoker's house and like say this was a smoker's house, they smoked, I don't know, even just like two cigarettes a day inside. You remove that after three years, and there's a yellow ring around it, right? Because of because of the sec the third hand smoke on the walls, right? It embeds and everything. And so the other thing that I like to, to tell people is that okay, theoretically, let's say that I'm a mom and I have a baby and I'm a good mom, but I'm a smoker. 
And so um, I, I let, leave my baby in the house with an adult, and I go outside and I smoke my cigarette. Okay, and then I go, and then I'm done smoking my cigarette, and I come inside and I wash my hands because I'm a good mom. I wash my hands to, to protect my baby, but I pick my baby up and I hold her, and I'm exposing her to 7,000 different chemicals because it's on my shirt, it's on my hair, it's on my skin. You can't get away from it, right? And people don't realize people are people are smoking with the windows rolled up, but the kids are in the car. And more like if you if your parents smoke, more likely that you are to your kids smoke. And then if you are exposed to secondhand smoke and thirdhand smoke, more likely you are to grow up and have lung disease. You know. I was just going to say it was going to be on your shirt. Yeah, yes, clothes. yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and I know and a lot of people just don't know that or realize it, you know? It's not like they're trying to expose their kids, but it's really not doing them any good. All right, so other tobacco products. What's this? Bomb. Hookah. Hookah. Vape. Cigar. Cigars. Chewing tobacco. And chew. Okay, so we're going to go through all those. So, smokeless tobacco. Who is, who is the person that's more likely to use this? Like what most commonly? It's just baseball players. Baseball players, yeah. I was looking for men, but that works too. Baseball. It's, it's ingrained into the baseball's culture, right? And you guys, that's not an accident. The tobacco industry did that on purpose. In the 50s, 60s, and 70s, they paid people like Babe Ruth to use their products. And it's like literally ingrained into the MLB like, like whole thing. Like you're, you're, and you're not a man if you don't use smokeless tobacco, like that's their marketing, the right? Is trying to get it makes you a man, what? The MLB is trying to get rid of it. Yes, so that's really, yes, so a lot of MLB um, stadiums are ruling out tobacco altogether, too. So yeah, so there are a lot of, you know, we're making a lot of progress. Um, so there's over 28 cancer-causing chemicals in, in smokeless tobacco, and the amount of nicotine absorbed in one 30-minute dip is equal to the uh, three cigarettes. And the bottom line is that if you use a tobacco product, the more likely you are to use another tobacco product, right? Because if you, you get your fix from smokeless tobacco and then all of a sudden it, start, it stops satisfying your craving. So then you move to vape, right? And then vape stops doing that, so then you move to Juul. And then Juul stops doing that, so you move to six. Like, so it, it's just like, it's a cyclical cycle, right? Your body gets a, so used to the amount of nicotine that it needs more, okay? And so not only does that make you more likely to be addicted to nicotine, but it makes your brain more susceptible to being addicted in general to heroin, to alcohol, to other drugs. Okay, because your brain is still developing. It like literally alters that. All right, hookah. So hookah is a water pipe that's used to smoke tobacco, usually sweetened. Um, it's called shisha. Um, hookahs are believed to come from the Middle Eastern countries. It's very ingrained in their culture. It's very normal for, to see a hookah in the Middle Eastern companies, countries. <laughs> um, so. And hookah is really often um, perceived to be safer than cigarettes. Um, and so can it, you guys just share with me some, some reasons why you think people would think that uh, hookah is safer than cigarettes? Some theories, maybe. Go ahead. It looks cleaner. It looks cleaner. Yeah, and it's in a fun little, yeah. it's not like a smoldering cigarette. Yeah. Anything else? What else do you think? Go ahead. Um, like people like go, just go to a place that has that and they like all sit together so mm -hmm. it's not yeah like, hookah bars doesn't smell like terrible it's like kind of a social thing yeah yeah it's, it's sweet uh-huh no fire involved. there's no fire involved yeah that's a good there's no like smoke smoldering smoke anything else yeah uh the general marketing around it i know of a game bar in it's not even a bar it's just a game lounge that has hookah for people who are older than, mm -hmm. 18. than 18 yeah yeah totally Another thing that everyone usually says is because of their water, because they feel like the water filters out some toxins. Um, but the truth is, is one hour of smoking hookah is equal to 100 cigarettes. And the thing is about hookah is that it's like a social thing. Like, like you said, they sit around and you socialize, and therefore you're sitting there for like 45 minutes constantly, you know, inhaling this thing. Um, and something else to, to mention about hookah is that yes, they use shisha, and shisha is a very you know concentrated tobacco, anyways. But you put the shisha in this little thing, and then you put aluminum foil over the top of it, and then you put a smoldering piece of coal on the top of that. Um, you really shouldn't be inhaling the smoke that comes off of the smoldering coal or something that's like on top of aluminum foil, okay? Because those things let off the heavy metals and tin and, and cancer-causing things, let alone the, um, the nicotine, okay? So, so it's not, it's, 
the water doesn't do anything. It's it's still a pretty um, concentrated uh, level of tobacco. All right, so let's rock on over to vape. So vape is the most commonly used tobacco product among young people. Are you surprised at all? No. Um, so I, I'm going to kind of give you, so electronic nicotine delivery systems, that's what we call them in public health because there's so many different products, right? There's like hundreds and hundreds of different products. And they all look so different. Um, but they all have the same function, and they all have predominantly the same pieces, which I'll show you in the next slide. But I'm just going to kind of talk through these. So the one on the far right, is a disposable e-cigarette. This is like one of the first generation ones that came out in like 08. Um, so what you would do is you'd use it um, and you'd throw it away when you're done. You don't recharge it, you just throw it away. Um, and then we've moved on over to these guys right here, rechargeable e-cigarettes, medium-sized tank devices, and large-sized tank devices. So these are rechargeable, so you can plug them into a charger. Um, so the difference between these, the tank devices, is that they have a tank, like a big tank to store the liquid nicotine solution. Um, and then you buy the, the e-juice, liquid nicotine solution separately um, in a different bottle, which we'll, get, we'll dive into again. You'll see, you'll see what it looks like, but I'm just kind of trying to over, like, do the overarching thing. Um, so the difference between these two is the size of the battery. So this battery is a lot smaller than this. This is a mod, so a mod has a massive battery. So have you guys ever seen somebody vape, um, and it's like literally like a cloud of smoke. You're like, holy crap. That? Like, is their car on fire? And it's like a huge cloud of smoke. If that, if you see that, they probably have one of these bigger batteries. Because the, the bigger the battery, the higher you can heat the temperature up to, therefore vaporizing more of that nicotine liquid solution. I'm not even going to say the name, but how many of you know what this is? Raise your hands. Yeah. So this is a jewel. I know you guys all probably know what it is, so don't, it's fine. Literally everybody does. It's so normal. So normal among young people right now. Uh, I mean, not only is it like popular in urban areas like Lawrence, like, and you know, out in rural America and rural Kansas, like this is an issue too. It's not just uh, chew. <laughs> um, so all of these products have these pieces, right? They all have a mouthpiece. They all have a tank which um, stores that nicotine, liquid nicotine chemical solution, and they have an atomizer, a heating element that heats, that heats that liquid nicotine solution up into um, an aerosol, which is directly inhaled into your lungs. Uh, and then there's always a battery, which is usually rechargeable. So all of, all of the vape products all have this piece, these pieces, so that's what quant, like, categorizes it as a vape product. What does that mean? Yeah, it's just okay. It's like, a yeah, it's okay. Electric bell. Electric bells, and so that's the that's the first one. Okay, I was like, man. <laughs> um, oh, and okay. This is one thing yeah. that if you guys don't walk away with anything from my presentation, I want you to walk away with this. Vape is a tobacco product. Vape is definitely a tobacco product because there's nicotine found in it, and nicotine is naturally found in tobacco, right? And it's the same big guys, big tobacco companies using the same tactics to market to the same people, which is you guys. Okay, so e-cigarette use has increased dramatically sevenfold from 2011 to 2017, increased seven times, okay? So does this surprise anybody? Like, I, it makes sense. You guys have seen it. Um, so, like I said, there's a tons of different products, um, but there's, they, they get pretty creative. So this one right here is vaporware. It's a hoodie, and the hoodie string is a vape. Um, this guy, O2 vape clip, so you guys know the key fobs that like, you can press and it flips out? That's kind of like what this is like, so you can close it. And it just looks like a key fob, right? And this one is the most, uh, this one it really bothers me. Um, I just, yeah. literally yesterday, I googled stealthy vape products. The Up Puff, the Puff itself inhaler vape. This is a vape, right here. Does anyone have asthma in here? But it looks like an inhaler. Yeah, I mean, I like, I don't even want to imagine, but what, you know, that would be really bad. It, this should be illegal. Like, this, we should not tamper with that. So, if I'm over the age of 18, why would I need to purchase these products? I wouldn't. I wouldn't need to purchase these products because it's legal. I don't need to hide it. These products were created for you guys because you can hide it from because you can, so you can hide it from your parents and bring it to school and use it whenever you want to. They would not create these products for for me because I don't need to hide it. Okay, so that's just one of the ways that vape has tried to target you guys to use their products. Um, let alone all of the flavors. Okay, this whole logo looks like Pop Rocks. 
like exactly like a Pop Rocks logo. Um, there's offered in cotton candy flavors. I mean, and then what does this look like? That looks like the trolley worms. Gum, yeah, gummy worms. And this one? Sour Patch Kids. Like, undoubtedly. Like, not even trying to hide it. Right? And so the t tobacco industry um, came up with flavors because they know that flavors are enticing to, to novice smokers. Okay, so novice smokers would rather use a flavor thing because it masks the harshness and so it's not as strong, it doesn't burn your throat as much. So that's where all of this stuff uh, stems from and we know that novice smokers are people under the age of 18 usually. So there's over 15,500 different flavors of vape. And I got this statistic in June. So chances are that it's up to like 25,000 now. Because there's a new product on the market every week, a new like vapor product, let alone all the juices that come with it. So this is just spreading like wildfire. And we know that vape is enticing, I mean that flavors are enticing to young people, okay? Kids love candy, right? It's not, I mean even adults love candy. So I mean, but it does, like I just said, it makes it easier for young people to use. So, what is inside of e-juice, e-liquid? Um, so, it always contains propylene glycol and glycerin. Okay, always. Um, because you can't really make the vape without it. So, nicotine, more often than not, is included in vape. Some vape products claim that they do not have nicotine in them. Um, but, there's been many, many uh, studies of people who randomly select vape products to test what it, what they said is and it is actually in it. There's a, uh, so many times there's still nicotine in it, even though they claim that there's not nicotine. Okay, so what you guys need to understand is that these products are not regulated by the FDA. Um, the guy at Juicy's Vapor Lounge can make his products in his bathtub if he wanted to. Um, so you can do you like you guys can ask me you know what what am I what am I vaping and I could say well it probably has this in it but I don't know I'm not for sure couldn't tell you for sure you know so that's the kind of situation that we're dealing with this has just skyrocketed so much that the um, we haven't had time to like keep it under control to like know what's actually going on so that's so that's what I you know that's the situation that we're dealing with um, and there's all almost always flavoring right. And so the other thing about flavoring is that uh, a lot of the flavors that they're using are approved for human ingestion, right? Like you could put it in a candy bar or, and eat it. That's, that's fine. It's not going to kill you. But those things are not approved for human, human inhalation into your lungs, heating up to a higher temperature and inhaling it into your lungs. Your gut can process a lot more things than your lungs can. Your lungs are very sensitive. Okay, and so just inhaling these things straight into your lungs is probably a bad idea. All right, so vapes create aerosol. Um, air, it's, it's classified, when you take this stuff, it's classified as a, like chemically as aerosol. Um, so it's aerosol is all the things in those um, pressurized cans, you know, hairspray and spray paint and like tons and tons of cleaners. So aeros that's what vape is, it's aerosol. So what's inside of these, this aerosol? Um, more often than not, there's volatile organic compounds, ultra-fine chemicals, nicotine, and um, heavy, heavy metals such as nickel, lead, and um, tin. And so the reason why heavy metals get in there is because of the atomizer. So that atomizer gets heated up into a really high temperature, therefore it lets off some of its particles into that e-juice. So, all right, let's chat about Juul. Um, so let's, even if you guys don't know about it, what, just tell me some of the things you know just by looking at this product. Like what, what are some of your, what do you gather from it? Go ahead and say it. It looks pretty futuristic. It, it looks, looks futuristic. Cool. Yeah, good. It's pocket edition. It's small. Pocket addiction. Yeah. Addiction. Addition. <laughs> Go ahead and say it if you have anything. What else about the jewel do you guys know? Frankly, it looks kind of like a flash drive. It looks like a flash drive. <laughs> Super small, easy to conceal. Do you guys know anything else about it? Fancy. So, say? Fancy. Sorry. Fancy. Fancy. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Anything else? Do you know about anything about the product at all? It's like an the cigarette. What? It's an e-cigarette. It's a vape. Yeah, an e-cigarette. It's a vape. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, and they come in pods. Oh. The, they come with pods. So, okay, I'll dive into that. Okay, so the Jewel is a vape shaped like a USB flash drive. Um, it comes, always comes in a flavor. 
So the flavor options are mango, cool cucumber, creme brulee, cool mint, Virginia tobacco, and fruit medley. Um, that sounds a lot more like a kid's like candy store than a tobacco industry's you know flavor menu. Okay, um, it's the most popular baked product on the market today. It's super common among young people. And um, something that a lot of people, a lot of young people don't know is that if you are using a Juul product, you are using nicotine. There is no such thing as a nicotine-free Juul. No, that's not, that's a completely unheard of, and you can go on Juul.com and you can clarify that, okay? Uh, so this is a Juul starter kit. Um, this costs about $40 to $50. So you have the, uh, it comes with the Juul, it comes with the charger that can plug into your um, USB drive on your laptop or just in a regular charger. And it comes with all four of their different flavors that you can try. Um, and so, and then if you're just going to buy the pods, so these are, this is what the liquid nicotine is in, these pods. Um, and so you can just buy pods. The pod is $16 for a four pack of pods. That's $4 a pod. Does anyone know how much cigarettes cost? Like $5 a pack. Yeah, if, you, if not even more sometimes too. So yeah, so it's, there's more. Um, these, I mean, these are cheaper, sorry. These are actually cheaper, you're saving money. So Juul has only been on this e-cigarette market for three years, three years. And this, was, this is a pie chart um, from September 8th, 2018. They dominate the e-cigarette market, over 72%. This is all of those big tobacco companies. Juul like, just knocks them out of the water completely. Three years old. Three. So why, what are some of the, and we know, okay, we know that it's young people that are using these products, right? Um, so why, why? Why is Juul so enticing to young people? Let's hear it. Easy to hide. Easy to hide. What else? Cheaper. Cheaper? Yeah, you know, like they said, it, it's like but seen as cool. Seen as cool. It's socially acceptable. Easy to use. Easy to use. Yeah, like the thing is about jewels that you don't have to edit the atomizer. You don't have to replace the coil. It's really simple. Go ahead. Just, it has like flavors and stuff. Flavors. Mm -hmm. It tastes like candy. I heard that specifically in the mango one. Cool. Like candy. Anything else, Sammy? It looks cool. It looks cool. Yeah. So yeah, those are all good reasons as to why you would think that young people are using it. Um, I think another reason why young people are using it is because adults have no idea. Like they don't know what it is. I'm serious. I gave presentations to like the students. I mean to staff, and it's like, oh my god, you guys don't know. Anything. You know, because they don't, and your parents don't know either, and you guys know that as well. Um, and but in addition to that, I think the main reason why Juul is so popular and so you know it just knocks everybody out of the park is because of the mega dose of nicotine that is in a Juul pod. So one Juul pod is equal yields as much nicotine as a pack of cigarettes. And I literally got this from www.juul.com. So this the thing is about the Juul product is that. They've always um, prided themselves in how much their product uh, simulates a cigarette. So they've always, their, their whole, whole thing has been, well, switch to, switch to Juul because it's a better option, okay? That's what they've always, they've always said. Um, but they, they're very, they're very like, proud of the fact that their pod is as much nicotine as a pack of cigarettes. They're very proud of that, okay? Um, and what's interesting is that they have, a, they've, been very innovative with the way that they developed their nicotine, right? So what sets off Juul way away from all the other vape products is that normal vape products use free-based nicotine, which is found not like in tobacco, just normally, that's just how it is, it's called free-based nicotine. So what Juul Labs did is they created nicotine salts. And nicotine salts, um, it's, it's a smoother way of delivering nicotine, and I'm going to dive into that, I'm going to show you how that's done chemically. So. You have just, so what you start off with is just free base nicotine. And then you protonate, pro, protonate it, you add a proton to it, and it uh, decreases the pH level, which makes it more basic, which makes it not as like coarse and harsh on the back of your throat. So this is a smoother way of delivering nicotine, which is really scary because that, it's a, because one of the reasons why people like, if they ever try a cigarette, they're like, oh my God, I just died, my throat hurts so bad. You know, but if you don't get an immediate, like, uncomfortable, like, discomfort, like, it could be really enticing. And so how this works is they use uh, benzoic acid. They put free-based nicotine with benzoic acid, 
And then, um, so that's what creates nicotine salts. And benzoic acid is actually found in bug spray. And I'm not making this up, you guys. You can look on the back of a jewel pot or a jewel starter kit, and on the ingredients, it says benzoic acid is the last ingredient, and which is found in um, bug spray. Does anyone have any questions about that? Yes. You said it's the last product, so that means there's the, that's the least mm -hmm. of it in the whole entire. Yeah, I think. Well, actually, that's like that's how it is for food. Uh -huh. who, who knows what it's okay. for for um, yeah. tobacco? So yeah, that's what you would think immediately. But I don't know that that's actually true. Okay, and not to mention the reason why it's so common is because it's so it's like skyrocketing on social media. Um, have you guys ever heard of the Jewel Challenge before? Everyone's like, no. Uh, I'll say what it is. So, um, the, well, there's been like multiple kinds. So, like I've seen somebody try to stick like five jewels in their mouth and try to inhale. I don't understand like the point of that. But the other version is sorry. The other version is um, that you bring it into school and you record yourself doing it uh, behind the teacher's back. And so that's like became a real big issue. I mean, even I don't know if you guys know where Garnett is. Their SRO called me and was like, we had to expel three kids because they were sitting in the counselor's room and the moment she left, they all started jeweling and they recorded themselves and posted it on social media, um, which kind of gives it away, like, sorry. <laughs> You're kind of giving yourselves away the fact that this is happening. Um, but what's really interesting is that you can go on YouTube and try to Google that stuff and it's not there because Jewel Labs partnered with YouTube and said, get this crap off of here because it's making us look bad. Um, so they're trying to cover their tracks, but this is super popular among young people. Um, okay, so this is a, everyone like always gives me a weird look, like they're like, I've never seen this before. It's like, okay, well that's good because you're 15, so you probably shouldn't see e-cigarette um, ads, but this ad is also old. So this ad is about a year and a half old. Um, what do you, what do you find about this? Just shout out some things that you know, characters. Colors. What else? It's a very visually appealing, visually enticing thing. It makes it look like something fun and exciting. Yeah, like she's on color a theory. She's, she's <laughs> pretty. Well. She's good yeah. looking. Yeah, she has Ariana Grande hair. And she's got like the snap pose. What's so funny is that there's a cool cigarette um, that you can literally put these, the cigarette ad right next to them. It's exactly the same, except she's just holding a cigarette. It is in the 80s, too. <laughs> So yeah, so she looks really young. So obviously, who are we trying to market to? Young people. That person looks extremely young. Yeah, I know. She's really cute, but I like her outfit. Like, so, I mean, you know, like it's like, wow, super trendy, super bright and colorful, smoking evolved. And that's kind of their branding. So the FEA, um, because they're, they're doing so well, they're like, what the heck? And they know about all the young people that are, being, that are starting to use Juul, you know? Um, so the FDA put them under a microscope and said, okay, what the heck are you doing like, with your marketing? So their marketing looks like this now. Give your mom a jewel and help her quit smoking because you love her. Kind of deal. Like that's like the epitome of it. So now they put, look how different that is compared to what they had before. Because they got caught out for it. So this is what, you know, they, they're good at marketing too. So the bottom line, is vaping healthier than smoking? Um, so I know this is what everybody wants to know, so I'm going to tell you the truth. Vaping is healthier, is safer, not healthy, oh my gosh, not healthy. Vaping is safer than smoking. So traditional cigarettes expose you to more chemical, um, to more toxic chemicals and cancer-causing chemicals than vape. But vape exposes you to cancer-causing chemicals and toxic chemicals, okay? To, uh, traditional tobacco just, yield, just get, exposes you to more. But that does not make vape safe, you guys. Vape is not safe at all. Um, so this, the thing to remember here is that e-cigarettes have only been on the uh, US market for 10 years. So uh, we don't know the long-term health effects. We don't know if it can kill you or not. Yeah, because people are like, well, how long is it going to take for vape to, to kill me? And it's like, well, you know, if you keep doing it, maybe we'll find out. Because the people who are using it right now are like guinea pigs. They're literally like lab rats. Because we don't know the long-term health effects of these things. Like, we're still learning, okay? Um, so, can't tell you what's gonna happen to you later, but there are a few things that we do know about. Did you have a question? No, okay. 
Um, so as there's evidence that vape is strongly associated with the use of other tobacco products, right? Kind of just like the smokeless tobacco thing. Like, if you're going to use a tobacco product, you're going to try to find your fix another way, right? So that's so we do know that if you start using vape, the more likely you are to use traditional tobacco products, right? And that's really scary. Because we've done so much work, right? That 71% decrease of kids who use, who, who have stopped using cigarettes, this is gonna trump everything that we've done, right? This is a possibility that kids are gonna start using vape and then again be smoking in general, nicotine use is going to be renormalized, right? So that is like the big biggest public health crisis that's facing your generation today. Like we are really genuinely concerned that you guys are all going addicts kind of so that's something to think about um, the bottom line that is that any form of nicotine is really harmful to your brain like I said it messes with your synapses it, it literally can alter your brain for the rest of your life okay and it's make you more susceptible to being addicted to what's your synapses in your brain oh okay. the, the synapses in your okay. brain like that fire your yeah. neurons that's what I mean sorry the reactor yes 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 yeah. yes so uh, another question that I was getting, well, what if my vape doesn't have nicotine in it? Because all you've talked about is how bad nicotine is for you. Um, so like I said, we don't, like, there's really no for sure way to know that it doesn't have nicotine in it. So don't be so confident about the fact that your vape doesn't have nicotine in it. Um, but a vape always contains vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol. And so again, when you heat something up enough to be vaporized, it chemically changes its set, right? And so vegetable glycerin, it can yield toxic chemicals when it's put up into, um, to the heating level of vape. Okay, so it's honestly, it's not good to inhale things into your lungs. I mean, please use your asthma inhalers and your breath, your breathing treatments from your doctor. But just if you think about it, it can't, it can't be good for you. Your lungs are really delicate organ. Okay, um, so it's not safe. And let alone that it's not safe, they also blow up. They're also faulty. Um, there's actually been a whole bunch of house fires that have happened. That's too. like flu. Yeah, the, yeah, I know, right? It like it literally exploded. And this is a PG version of this, guys. You can go online and Google, and you can see some very, very gory things, like people missing their face. Like I saw one of a guy who was who's exploded when he was hitting it, and the um, the mouthpiece like went through his cheek. Ugh. Yeah, and explosions like in their in their um, pockets, like in taking out literally a chunk of your by um, and people I don't know why but they think it's okay to sleep with them under their pillow and I mean I just think about it it's not that's not a good idea okay um, so they're faulty they can they they can explode let alone that they are bad for you too so again the million dollar question is will vape renormalize smoking okay like this is a really huge concern for for your your generation um, so do you have, do, I have any do you guys have any questions for me about vape and the way it works? Really quick? Nothing? Okay, we'll move on to the next piece. For you? Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about my program. So uh, I am the program manager for Resist. And Resist is a youth-led statewide movement created to fight against the tobacco industry in Kansas. So um, we know that tobacco, or just prevention in general, like if it's, if it's an adult coming up here and say, you know, drugs are bad, you know that, or you know, a police officer, drugs are bad and you don't do it, like that's not effective, okay? There's other things that need to go on, especially peer to peer. Like if one of your peers, like if a senior was up here talking about this and is passionate about it as me, I bet it would make it way more effective like into what you guys are thinking because they're your age, right? Um, I'm just like just on the cusp, I'm like 10 years. <laughs> So um, our goal is to create the first tobacco-free generation, right? We want to steer away from what's getting ready to happen with vape. Um, so when we say that we're youth-led, we literally mean it. Like I have 15 youth from throughout the state who literally decide everything we do um, at the state level. So these kids chose this year, obviously, to work on vaping in schools because it's such a prominent issue. Um, so these kids could get the opportunity to be involved at the local level, at the state level, and at the national level. Um, one of my people, Haley Kissner, she actually got the opportunity to go to D.C. They flew her out there, and she got to talk to um, our rep from Kansas at the U.S. Capitol and talk to them about how the FDA needs to mandate how they're going to deal with e-cigarettes. And turns out she did that in June. 
the FDA comes out in September and puts the smackdown on Juul and five other, four other different products. You guys remember that candy, the candy one with the trolley? That company got in trouble too. So they're under the eye and they have 60 days to come up with a way to, like Juul. Juul has 60 days to come up with an, um, a plan to get vape out of their, their product out of kids' hands. And what's interesting is asking Juul to come up with a way to keep their product out of kids' hands is like asking the fox how to guard a hen house, okay? Because they need you guys to, to use their products. Like, they may claim that they don't, but we know, 90% of smokers start smoking for the age of 18. And obviously, Juul is so popular among you guys. So anyways, applications for our statewide council open on November 1st. So if you guys are interested in any of the stuff that I'm speaking about, you can come up here and sign up. All you would do is get um, information from me about um, ways that you can get involved in tobacco pre vape prevention and locally. Um, so what we do at Resist is we hold statewide events. So we have a kick butt stay at the Capitol um, and this happens at the beginning of March and so we have different groups that come up to the Capitol and they have a scheduled meeting with both of their representatives. Um, and so they go into the Capitol and literally sit across the table from their reps and have a conversation about how we need to keep vape out of kids' hands. And sometimes they'll talk about policy, sometimes they won't. Which is, you know, like Tobacco 21 or increasing um, the amount of tax that's on. Um, so here, so policy advocacy. So the most effective way to keep kids away from tobacco is passing policy because policy affects everything below it, right? Socially, right? It's, it's because, okay, so 10 years, you guys probably don't remember, but 10 years ago you could smoke in, um, inside restaurants and public places. So whenever you went to go sit down, you'd say smoking or not smoking, which in Missouri is still a thing. Um, and you'd say non-smoking and you'd go and sit down and there'd be a wall this tall and you could see somebody smoking their cigarette, right? And we know that secondhand smoke is deadly. So that's involuntary exposure, right? So policy keeps people safe, okay? And that's why we advocate for um, changing policy. So this young person was advocating in Topeka to increase the legal age from 18 to 21. Um, so that's happened in all over Kansas City. And guys, this is actually happening in Lawrence. So there's a group of people who are advocating for the legal age to be increased from 18 to 21 in Lawrence. And if you guys, are, if you guys think that that could be something really strong and powerful, Come chat with me because we could maybe give you an opportunity to go speak to the city commission. There's a group of other people from other classes that are interested in advocating for this. So if you want to be civically engaged, if you want to take that role and, and um, protect your peers, come chat with me after this. Um, so we do awareness activities too, like this is more like an interactive thing. So to, Wichita was trying to pass tobacco-free parks. Um, so what we did, we went through and picked up a cigarette and replaced it with a flag. And by the end of it, there were flags everywhere. Right, all like in the sandbox where the kids were playing over by like the play place too. And so what we did is we took pictures of that and you saw the visual where they were, all the cigarettes were. We took it to the city council. We said, look, look at all this, look at all these cigarettes, but we really need a tobacco free. Why should kids be, you know, be around this kind of stuff? So that was just an activity that we did that led us to policy change. So, oh, there's more pictures. So bottom line is that resist is anti-big tobacco. Okay, we're not against the tobacco user. Okay, we know that you guys, that if it's somebody is using tobacco, they've, they've definitely been manipulated and using their product and it's extremely addictive. So, we aren't against the tobacco user, we're against big tobacco. Because the tobacco industry spends $1 million every hour on marketing. That's $9.1 billion a year. That's enough money to feed 8.3 million U.S. families every month. Like, think about the things that you could be doing with this money. So why do you think the tobacco companies have to use so much money on marketing? Because marketing is what makes... Marketing is effective. Marketing is effective. It makes them more money. And yeah. especially if they are constantly trying to find new ways to either get people addicted or get around the policies that are being put in place, then they need something new every hour. Yep, exactly. What do you think? Yeah. The social, yes, that's a good way to put it. So, yeah, those are both extremely valid reasons. But also, the people who use their products are dying. 480,000 people in the United States die every year from, from just cigarettes alone. This isn't even including vape. So that's, that's 1,300 people every day. That's one person every 66 seconds, okay? So it's the only product, like I said before, when used intended, that kills half of its users. 
All right. So smoking kills more than which of the following? All of them. All. All of them combined. So put them all together, and smoking still kills more than that. Than well, all of us. Yeah, this is like the thing that's been swept under the rug for entirely too long. And we know, we know that it's bad for you, you know? So the, the bottom line is big tobacco needs you to replace all the smokers that are dying from using their products. Okay? They need a new generation of smokers, and that's exactly what vape was created for. They know that 9 out of 10 smokers start smoking before the age of 18, and currently, 20, in, in the United States, 2,500 kids start smoking every day. And of those 2,500 kids, 40, 400 of them become daily smokers. And if we don't change this, if, if this doesn't get altered, 5.6 million kids under the age of 18, your peers, will die prematurely from smoking. Guys, this isn't even involving vape. This is still smoking, okay? So anyways, if you're interested in um, signing up, please come up here and chat with me. If not, thank you, you guys. Thank you, 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 thank you